All right. I'm going live real quick. Okay, y'all. So I had to go live. All right. Y'all know we had these great, amazing talks. And just for y'all who are watching us, good morning. Nicole Cooper here. Um, and for those that don't know me, online business developer and coach. But here's the thing. Uh, we've been shooting these videos. Y'all probably are trying to figure out, like, what I, what's going on? Who are those ladies? So all the ladies here, we're a part of a mastermind group of digital marketers and people who are behind the computer making big things happen. And so we're all together in a mastermind group. This is the ladies version. We do have men and women. And so we're all together here. And that just kind of gives you an, an idea of the kind of knowledge and wisdom and experience and success that is in this house, okay? So every time there is a conversation, it's like, yo, we need to record that. Like, I'm gonna need you to repeat that. I mean, I don't know how many times Velvet this weekend, we all in bathing suits, y'all, headed to the to rooftop to go get get uh, hang out. But she just dropped some game that I was like, oh my gosh. So, so let me just tell you guys, the thing is, is many people, you know, especially in this house, with all this talent, all this knowledge, all this wisdom, all this game. Let me just put them on camera. You got Katrina and Kai. You got Velvet, right? You got half and half. Half the house ain't got no issue with that, right? <laughs> Donticia and Cassandra, right? But half of us are always hiding behind the computer, behind a project, working on something. And we're very bad about getting ourselves out there, right? But here's the thing. It's like you have, we have, we know that there's a lot of wisdom that need to be out there and there's a lot of people who need it, but the wrong people got the loudest voices and the biggest presence, okay? The wrong people. So we were just talking about all the clients that we get, how they all come to us with all these issues because they're following the people with the loudest voices. But Velvet said something, because we had a whole therapy session. We had an Iyala Fix My Business session last yes. night for Katrina. <laughs> Katrina, ah, right? But Velvet just said something that y'all got to hear. She had a game drop that I was like, you got to share. So come on, Velvet. Come on, come on, okay, come on. So here's the game. We all sit in our, in our globe knowing what we know and knowing that we're good at it, knowing that we can get testimony in five seconds from hundreds of people. Yet, mo many times we don't really speak to it. And we watch others that are speaking to it. And we're like, wow, they're doing this and they're doing phenomenal numbers. But they're not even as knowledgeable in this as I am. They're not giving it from a real perspective like I can. But I was just telling the ladies that a lot of the reason is because imposters don't suffer with imposter syndrome. Uh, ain't that big beast kill, right? Repeat that for me. Please repeat that for me. Period. Like, yo, repeat that <laughs> for me. Imposters do not suffer with imposter syndrome. So I want to say, with you sitting down, closed mouth, me too, by the way, me too. You know, and I know I suffer with it. And the thing is, like, we have to open our mouths and speak because we got shit to say. And it's important. That's right. It's for legacy. It's it's for your story to continue. It's so that nobody else can tell your story the way you could tell your story. But imposters don't suffer with imposter, imposter syndrome. syndrome. Woo! And the, and the reason why she's saying, talking about imposter syndrome is because most of us do. The right ones who need to be out there are dealing with imposter syndrome. They have some level of resistance holding them back. And just tell them who you are and what you've accomplished. Because, listen, she's she not just up here reading poetic books and spitting, repeating cliches. Tell them what you've been able to accomplish. I got imposter syndrome. I'm nervous. So, uh... You need to tell them what you've accomplished, baby girl. Okay. So my first accomplishment was raising five children. I'm the eldest of five with a workaholic mother. So y'all know how that can go. You know, you just, you in control of everything. You got to make sure schedule's on point. And I was 11 years old when the youngest was one. Wow. So, um, so t I, I accomplished that. Okay. So, um, and then from there, I joined the military as a cryptologist. Um, for 21 years, I retired. And when I retired, I retired forever. Because when I was 19, I hired a broker 
who changed my life. And from there, <laughs> I was able to help thousands of others retire and live debt free just from being a, a financial counselor for Dave Ramsey, you know. And so um, then from there, I started this phenomenal company uh, called Inclusive Two Ends. And me and my business partner, we just really changed the trajectory of rentals, the rental space. We really invent, invented the tech tools that eliminated this, a lot of the discrimination and biases happening on these rental platforms. And you had how many properties? You being we real had. shy. <laughs> She being, okay y'all, she being yeah. real shy. She had over a million properties listed on her inclusive all over the world on every planet except Antarctica. Okay, let me just kind of give y'all a real quick. And her competition was Airbnb. Let me just yes. put that out there. Okay, she being real, real conservative. No, she had over a million properties on her inclusive yes. business model, right? She was a threat to Airbnb. Okay, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother conversation. I but I just need y'all to understand, these are the kind of women you have yes. in the room that is dropping these bombs. So when you get this level of game throw, I mean, look, she said imposters don't have imposter syndrome. Yo. Like that is, cause, cause we were talking yesterday about why are the wrong people the loudest? <laughs> They're the boldest and they're the less soft. You said they're what the, kind? They're the boldest and they're the less They're, they're the boldest. Like, yes. Honestly, they, they don't really, they're not thinking about uh, how their words or how their advice impacts people who are around them. They're less introspective. And so, I mean, they have no problem. They're really not thinking about the implications of what they're saying and doing or not saying or not doing yes. in the world. And that, that's what it comes down to, yes. honestly. So brilliant. I and just I, love this one. And can I just add? Yeah. So um, now, fast forward inclusive, um, I, I, I kind of took a step back for my mental health. I was burnt out after all of this going on. And um, so now I live a very peaceful life and I coach, I have clients where I help, you know, but I'm not doing it for real. I'm just, you know, on the phone. Like. So my point is um, at some point, we have to really talk to that little thing that's always to do this. And a lot of the times, it's your own life story that can really right. be the reason for why you want to do what it is you do now. Your own life story. So let's, let's step out of it. And believe me, saying it to you, I'm saying it to me because we the same. <laughs> so let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you for the love. Yes. <laughs> get, get from behind hiding. Stop hiding. Come on out. So any final yeah. word? Look, Kai been dropping. Kai, you going to get your video Kai. promo real quick. Listen, uh, Kai, y'all, Kai is behind major, major, major brands. She is like the Facebook queen. But she is not just about Facebook ads. Sorry. Yes. Facebook ads. Let's, let's just hold another conversation. Right. Facebook ads. Um, but she understands how the inner workings of the internet work holistically. Like, how do you actually, are you able to get your business in a place where you're attracting your ideal clients, but you're creating a culture, a community, uh, you're just creating a whole ecosystem that is going to give your business long-term sustainability. So that is what Kai does. She is phenomenal. She is amazing. And she has so many nuggets that she drops as well. So I'll be bringing her out. And then you got Katrina Trina over there, right? Yes. So we, we, had, we had a fix, a fix my business session. Like she don't need no fixing. She just needed to get from behind hiding. That's all she had to do, right? We, we, had, we, had, we had to get her to stop hiding, right? Oh, oh, they said, come on, Kai, give us something. Come on, they want you to give them something, Kai. Oh, what should I give you? What should I give you? <laughs> give me a topic because she got a whole depth of knowledge, y'all. She can talk about a lot of stuff. I mean, I think, I think ultimately, just at a high level, the overarching message for a lot of people really needs to be, uh, like, before you come to a media buyer, right? Like there's, Tell them what a media buyer is, because these people don't even know it. Oh, okay, fair enough, it. fair enough. So what, what is a media buyer? So a media buyer is somebody who handles Let me turn the camera on. Let me go this way. Okay. okay. So a media buyer is somebody who handles paid traffic for, uh, for, for instance, an e-commerce brand. Um, I specialize in e-commerce. That's kind of my world. 
but it's somebody who's handling advertising, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, but it's at the end of the day, somebody who's actually looking at the numbers, diving into the data, making um, you know, really important decisions about optimization of your campaigns, um, and just helping you scale your business using paid traffic. So that's what a, that's a, a media buyer, are. yes. Um, media buyers are different, in my opinion, everybody's got an opinion on this, they are different from Facebook ad experts. I think there's kind of a, there's a, a hierarchy, if you will, I think, um, when it comes to skill and insight and knowledge and expertise. Um, Facebook ad experts are about here. They're, they're people who um, are telling you, hey, give me your copy, give me your creative, I'm gonna throw in an ads manager, I'll put some campaigns together, and we'll, and we'll run some traffic, I'll send you a little monthly report. And that's, that's essentially it. Really, they're focused predominantly on what's going on in Ask Manager, um, which is not remotely the entire story, right? So that's, that's where they are. Media buyers are actually data-driven individuals. They're identifying, and I'm looking at more of a holistic scope of things, right? Kind of like the end-to-end -end of what Facebook advertising, IG advertising, YouTube advertising really is. They're really diving into audience research. They're really uh, you know, asking and answering questions around your audience, uh, you know, the, psych the psychology of your audience, the buyer psychology. They're getting insight into what makes your audience tick so that they're crafting really tight copy. They're putting together and advising um, on creative that's gonna resonate most depending on what you know, structure, what pieces of the funnel you're, you're uh, you know, focusing in on, whether it's top of the funnel, which is like cold traffic, strangers, and, People haven't heard of your brand before. Middle of the funnel, which is generally warmer traffic. People are like you know, fans of your company pages, or people have hung out on your site before, but may not have necessarily purchased just yet. Some, somebody has a question. Why? Sure. She said, "Do you suggest media buyers as opposed to Facebook ad experts? How do we find them?" I think it, it depends on where you are in your business. I was going to say budget, honey. It's budget. Budget. There's, there's different price points. There's definitely a different price points. But I do think though that by and large, most, and I, I'm speaking for e-commerce, most e-commerce brands are better off working with a media buyer first. Like, just starting off off the bat with a media buyer. The reason why I say that, particularly those who are starting off just if, you know, in, in e-com, if you've been, you know, you've launched your brand a year or two years ago, maybe even three years ago, I think a media buyer is really where you wanna be at because they're gonna help you understand your numbers. Like a lot of, I think, Facebook ad experts, they're not focused in on, you know, where you're profitable or like what's, what your break even is. They don't really have, they're not really caring a whole lot about what's going on on the business side of things to make sure that whatever they're doing on the ad side of things is actually going to be profitable for you, right? Media buyers are more focused in on that. And I think that, and that's just like tip of the iceberg. Honestly, I think that they're just more, um, they're more data driven. They're gonna be spending a lot more time optimizing your ad, like in your ad account optimizing. They're gonna be having a lot more, a lot deeper conversations with you. Um, but I feel like, um, you know, again, it's the price point, right? Facebook ad experts, they're the people that are charging like, you know, $1,500 a month kind of a deal. Um, media buyers, they're putting a lot more time and energy into your account, and so they're, they're gonna be charging more. Yeah, um, Erica. It's, worth, <clears throat> it's definitely worth the investment. Um, I have seen very few Facebook ad experts actually garner some solid returns for people um, because they're not, they themselves are not actually looking at the full breadth and depth of what's going on on the business side. Or even what's going on on the site side of things, like with on site optimization. That's a whole, I mean, that's a whole master class right there. I was gonna say Kai Kai can get y'all like a, <laughs> we're gonna have a whole annual academy with Kai. Cause it's a it's a lot, it's a lot. And I think like there's a lot of people that I know that are on here that are just getting started on that side. So what are some recommendations? Just they're just getting started really with business. A lot of them are new business owners. So what would be, can you give us one good startup tip for somebody just really trying to get their business off the ground because they're talking about ads and media buying but they may not be ready for that right so what what is one good solid tip for a new business owner fully understand what your numbers are i think that's going to be the most critical piece 
Um, because that that's something that's like a foundation builder that's gonna carry off into whatever you decide to do, whether that's organic, like whether you're you know running communities or like focused in on social media management to grow your following and to actually create a pipeline, or whether you're working with influencers if that's your thing. But truly and honestly understanding what your numbers look like and what kind of like profitability, what kind of padding you've got with respect to your profit margins. So that's that you good. know exactly what to play with. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you know, if you're entering deals with influencer campaign or influencers, um, you're over here, you know, maybe running some email traffic, what have you, and you're paying perhaps somebody to, to run those campaigns, and you're not realizing that all of these all of these fees and all of these things add up. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to um, understanding exactly what it costs you to create this product, what it costs you to sell the product, what it costs you to ship the product, mm -hmm. right? All of that you've got to factor in, mm -hmm. and like on a per unit basis. So just get to a place where you fully understand your numbers so you know what to work with. And if, and, and if you have to like, you know, bump up your, your pricing a little bit to mm -hmm. accommodate the new marketing that you're going to take, then cool, do that. You'll know exactly by how much you need to increase, right? Major but key. it's critical. It's Major absolutely key. critical. And I think it's something that people who are just getting started or kind of like in that, that stage of infancy aren't really thinking about. Yeah. And it's burning them because they're not realizing that you know, they get excited about the, oh, cool, this is, you know, I just got 10K this month or whatever. And they don't realize that you didn't really get 10K. Yeah. We talked about that <laughs> yesterday, really right? Did. All right, Katrina, what's your one tip for new business owners? New business owners. Bossing up with babes in bikinis. That's what this is today. That's what we're doing. We bossing up with babes in bikinis before we head to the pool. All right, so what's your one business tip for new business owners? Um, validate your idea, right? Another word to call it concept. So many times new entrepreneurs want to get in and just sell, sell, sell. And it's all about the dollar, but it's not about sustainability. Right? How can you, how do you, how many times can someone use your product? If someone is coming to you for coaching, do you have a process that everybody can go through to get a desired result? So one of the things I typically tell my clients is think about a box of brownies. You go to the store and you buy that box of brownies because you see that chocolate square piece of gooeyness on the box and it costs a dollar. And so you bought it because you paid your one dollar to get that desired result. But not only that, if you turn the box around, it has steps in the back. It tells you exactly what to do in order to do it. What do you have? What are you doing? What have you created? What have you tested? What have you validated to make sure that what people are coming to you for is what they're going to get? So validate, yeah. test, prove, sample, case study, whatever you gotta do, your idea. And what happens is it allows you to do so many other things. It allows you to create more. It, it allows you to do something I call product line. Now, what can, what can people use before or after your product? Yep. Now we can start selling pans to cook it, right? Now we can, we can supply the eggs, we can supply the oil. You are able to do so much, but if you're only worried about getting that dollar and selling, selling, selling all day long, you're not able to create anything sustainable. And that's I what love it. Is. Yes. And tell, them, tell them about your business. Oh, so again, I'm Katrina Nicole, you guys. I'm sorry. I am the creator and founder of Six Figure Street. I help new and inspiring entrepreneurs, most of them entrepreneurs, add additional three to five figures per month to their income by doing the things that they actually love to do. And I Boom. show you how to do it by building sustainable and profitable businesses. Boom, love it. And then, Kim, where you at? Kim, what's your business tip for new business owners? Tell them who you are and what you do. Hi, I am Kimberly West, also Kimberly West Hamilton, known as the Global Gastronaut, um, known as the Luxury Expat. Um, just real quick, started my first business when I was 14, currently own six. Um, companies. Six different companies. I am an expat, living this luxurious life here in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Whoop, whoop. She put our whole trip together, y'all. Yes, with, with some assistance. With Danticia. Absolutely. Um, I have a travel company. We travel the world in search of excellent food and wine, and that's all we look for. So it's a very <laughs> niche um, opportunity. 
but I am most known for it right now, coaching women over the age of 40 how to get out of the rut, get unstuck, and live their absolute Ooh, best repeat that. Lives. Get out of the rut. Oh, wait, no, your audience. Stuck. Like, that's huge. Women over 40. I am mm. over, I am well over 40, so um, there's an interesting thing that happens in your life when you hit about 38, 39. Tell 40. me about it. There is a life shift that happens. Tell me about Most it. Most of the time, your kids are starting to come out of the house. You know, you may be an empty nester. You may have been in corporate America for quite some time. And around 40, you start to wonder, who am I and what am I really about? You've given up on some of the dreams that you had when you were younger, and now it is time to revisit not only those dreams, but it's time to revisit exactly who you are. Oh, and why yes. The Creator put you on this earth, and it's time to live. So I encourage and I coach women over 40 to do exactly that. Live your best life, get out of the rut, get unstuck, get free, leave the country if you want to, start that business, whatever it is that you were meant to do, it's time for you to do it because after 40 is your time. Yes! Oh, we love that, y'all. See, Yeah, period, right? <laughs> period. So that's what we are surrounded by. And that's just half the house. We got more coming. We got Dantesia Seymour, y'all. She helps people launch their inventions. We have Cassandra's here. She runs Stock and Stilettos. So if y'all are into stocks and investments, she has almost 100,000 people in her community. We got a few other powerhouses that are on their way in now, today. Now I, now I can tell you who's on their way in here now. Oh, who's on their way? Tell us who's on their way. Currently, currently in the van on the way from the airport is Danielle Leslie. Danielle oh. Leslie is on the way, y'all. So if y'all have seen Danielle everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> right? She teaches people how to launch their course, um, courses from scratch. She is on her way here. And then we have Tara coming too, right? Yes, Tara will be here this afternoon. And Tara teaches you how to build an app without code. Without, without code. Which is so impressive. Yeah, she has a huge, huge market as well where she teaches people how to build apps without doing code. So y'all, we are up in this bad boy, powerful black women doing big things in the digital space. Can I say one business? Yes. Start it. Get started. Start it. And then when you start it, wake up the next day and start it again. And yes. then wake up the next day and start it again every day. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than Progress over perfection. All these t-shirts. I know. Wait, wait, what was the first one you did in Velvet? It was imposters, imposters don't suffer don't from imposter syndrome. syndrome. What? That is a whole word. That, that, really that blew me away right there. All right, y'all. So that is it. We will keep y'all tuned in to all this game, free game and wisdom. Y'all see our party animal here. Y'all can tell who the party animal is, right? <laughs> you can just tell from the pink hair. Like, she's the one that's coming in to turn up the party. That's yes. Yeah. So, all right, y'all. Have a good whatever today is. Bye. Bye. It's Friday. Friday. <laughs> it's Friday for us, Eric. <laughs> right? All right, y'all. Bye.